In this video, we'll check out the Human Generator add-on for Blender. This add-on can generate realistic human characters for you. There are external apps for that, but this add-on gives you at least some of the functionality of these specialized apps right in Blender. This is a paid add-on, you can get it on the Blender market, and it is a very well-designed product. You will barely need a tutorial to use Human Generator, so this video will be more of a review or overview of the add-on. Currently, the stable version of Human Generator is version 3, and version 4 is in beta. In this video, I'll mainly show you version 4, because it has cool new features, and it will become the stable version in the near future. Installing Human Generator is not difficult, but it is a little bit different than other Blender add-ons. Aside from the main add-on, you have to install uh, content packs. First, on the Blender market, you have to download all files related to the version of Human Generator that you want to install. In the case of version 4, the first zip file is the actual add-on, and the HG pack files are the content. In version 3, the first zip file is the add-on, and the remaining zip files are the content. Now I'm going to install version 4. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click on Install, go to the folder where you downloaded the add-on, and I'm going to install version 4. Click the checkbox to enable it, and expand the options. First, you want to select the folder where the content will be unzipped. Here, I'm going to create a new folder and click on Change Path. Then, you want to select the content packs, which are the HG pack files that we downloaded. Select all of them and click this button. And finally, click on Install All Content Packs. Once you have the add-on and the content installed, you can start using the add-on and generating humans. So I have to expand the end panel and go to the Hume Gen tab. From the default screen that you get here, you can choose a base character. And so you have more generic um, characters called Asian, Black, uh, Caucasian, and so on. And you have ones with names, which are already customized for you. They look less generic and more like an interesting character. But you can start from any character and tweak it uh, to be exactly as you like. So if you want to create your own custom character, you should start with one of the more generic ones, let's say the Asian base, and click Generate New Human. By the way, you also have female characters, uh, but in this video I'll be showing the male ones uh, just because uh, they're less likely to trigger YouTube. So as soon as you press the Generate button, uh, it will generate a human for you, and you see that it's already rigged actually. To see things properly, you can enable Material Preview, give it a second, and then I'll go to object mode here, and I can also disable overlays, and uh, that way the rig will not get in the way. So from here we can start customizing the character. Here in the menu you have a bunch of categories, and so you can go through them one by one uh, and tweak your character. So first let's go to body, and here the main parameters are how muscular your character is, or how heavy it is, or how skinny it is. So if you want to make it more muscular, you just have to increase the muscular slider. If you want to add more fat to your body, you can increase the overweight slider. And if you want to make it more skinny, you can drag the skinny slider. The cool thing is that these are just sliders and you can play with them and see what you get. Everything is instantaneous, it's right in the viewport. So that is why I said that you don't really need a tutorial, you just play with the sliders. So you can go to the arms and tweak specific parameters for the arms. And something new in version 4 is that you can tweak the individual length of the um, limbs, such as tweaking only the forearm, making it longer or shorter. You can increase the thickness, make the hand longer, and so on. You can tweak individual muscles. So yeah, just play with the sliders and customize your character. Now let's say that we are done with the body. To move on to customizing another area, you have a couple of options. You can press this arrow button and that will take you to the age category. You can also use this drop down and just choose which category you want to edit. Or you can press the back button and again choose a category from this menu. So let's do it one by one. I'll go to age. And here just by dragging this slider, 
you can make your character appear much older or younger. And then you have, again, individual settings as to how this aging affects uh, the hair of the character, which we haven't applied yet, and also the shape and skin texture of the character. So let's make him a middle-aged guy and move on. Next, we can customize the face. And this is an area where you may want to spend a lot of time. You do have a lot of options. And as always, you just drag sliders and you can see what, what is happening in the viewport. So if nothing seems to be happening, you may be looking at this um, shape that is changing from the wrong direction. Uh, in this case, I just have to look at the side of the character and play with this and you'll see the customization that we are making. You have the option to randomize all sliders and this was also available for the body and in other parts of the add-on. And if you don't want a specific character but a random one, you can just press this and you'll get a fairly different type of character. Then press it again and it will change quite a lot again. And so you can just keep clicking until you find something you like. Then, of course, you can keep playing with the sliders uh, to customize it even more. As always, these sliders are intuitive and you can just play with them. Um, what is interesting is that you can press this button to reset the sliders to their initial default. And let's move on. So here we have the height of the character and this can actually change the appearance of the human quite a lot. If I make him much taller, you'll see that it changes quite a lot uh, and now the legs became very thin. So you may want to go back to body and maybe make the calf muscles a little bit thicker. Now back to height, if I enable overlays, what is cool is that as I'm tweaking this height, you'll see that the rig adjusts automatically. So this is very cool and it is not something that is trivial to make in Blender. So the add-on is doing something rather complex in the background. Let's move on. Next we have the skin of the character. Um, because we chose an Asian character, it automatically got a suitable skin, but here we can actually choose from a number of presets. So we can choose a darker color and that will dramatically change the look of the character. Again, you have sliders to tweak um, the look of the skin. You can make the normal map more pronounced and you can also tweak the roughness of the skin, but I find the default kind of nice. You can turn on um, subsurface scattering which will make the skin look more realistic. You can change the uh, color of the eyes and you can add details such as freckles um, and splotches. And you can give the character unshaven look. We can also add facial hair, you'll see in a second. And as always, you can randomize. Next, we have hair. So um, you can choose from a number of uh, hair presets. You can change the appearance of the hair, making it lighter or darker. You can even give it um, unrealistic dyed uh, color. Salt and pepper will add white hairs to your characters, making them look more aged. You can add eyebrows and then change their type with the next button, next previous. And again, you can change the color. So our character is starting to get a little bit extravagant, but uh, you know usually you would just go for more realistic colors. You can also add facial hair. And here you have um, control over the length of the individual hair particles. Okay, moving on. When you go to another area, most of the hair will be hidden. That is just to make your viewport faster, but the hair is still here. You can click this hair button and it will appear again. And also when you render, it will always appear in full detail. So here you can give your character clothing, which is cool, uh, but this is probably one of the weaknesses of the add-on. The clothes don't necessarily look great. They're not bad, but not great either. Sometimes they may stretch really badly. Sometimes you may see the body poking through the clothing. They do have some problems and I hope this will be uh, improved in later versions of the add-on. But what is cool is that even though I have uh, clothes on my character, I can keep customizing it. Um, I can make it taller and the clothes will automatically adapt to the height. 
I can play with the uh, body type and the clothes will adapt. So that is really nice. Um, it's just that, let's say, if I try to create a pose with the skeleton, you'll see um, stretching in the clothes, for example. So this can be fixed um, by selecting the cloth and going to modifiers and adding smooth corrective and placing it above the uh, subdivision modifier. And you'll see that improved the cloth a little bit, but it still has ways to go. Also the viewport performance may be a little bit slow. Um, so what you can do about that is to go to um, render properties, enable simplify, expand it, and set max subdivision to zero. So that will uh, disable subdivision modifier in the viewport, but it will be enabled for rendering. So that will make the viewport snappier and you can also switch to um, shaded view and that will make it even more um, responsive. By the way, if you select any of these clothes here, the interface will change and it will let you change the colors. Okay, same for the jeans. And then if you want to go back to editing the character, you just have to select the character mesh and uh, we can keep exploring. You can go to pose here. And so you have a library of simple poses such as sitting, or you have the option to create a Rigify rig. So right now we have this simple rig. If I press generate Rigify rig, the simple poses that we uh, saw earlier will not work anymore, but I'll be able to use Rigify to pose and even animate my character any way I like, okay? And if you're not familiar with Rigify, most of my channel is about Rigify, so you can check out my other videos. And it's important to note that if you convert to Rigify, you're breaking some of the uh, modularity of your character. So you may no longer be able to adjust the height of the character and so on. So keep that in mind. Uh, Rigify should be added at the very end when you're done with your character customization. And we also have expressions similar to the body rig we have the option to choose from a list of simple expressions or we can create a face rig. So all I need to do is press add facial rig. And actually before that, uh, I'm going to undo and I'm going to place the character in the default position and now create the face rig. So now we have these little dots at the face, which if I go to pose mode, I can move and I can freely pose the face of my character. You can even apply facial motion capture to this character. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail right now, but it is possible. And you can just click on the ARKit tutorial here and follow the steps. So this is all about uh, creating and customizing individual characters. Let's look at how we can create another custom character in this same scene. So I'm going to press the back button here and move this character, which is done now, out of the way then press on this deselect button uh, because right now we are focusing on this character uh, so press the deselect button and that will allow you to create another human so you can just choose a preset generate human and you can keep customizing it just like the first one when you have multiple characters you can press these arrows uh, to focus on a specific character so I'm going to create another one. And now I can use the arrows to focus on each character. And the character in focus will be the one uh, which can be tweaked. Okay, moving on. I'm going to create a new scene. And let's batch create a couple of characters. If you press Shift and A, the add-on added a new feature here. So you can choose between A pose or T pose, uh, so a basic pose from which you can create other poses. Or you can choose a couple of um, pose presets. So let's go for the poses. I'll make one character standing around and place it somewhere. Um, I can place the cursor over here, Shift A, 
uh, Ed, a socializing guy, and place the cursor in, at another place, and add a sitting character. Now, let's adjust the height, and maybe give them a plane to sit on, to stand on, and then go to Human Generator, go to this next tab, showing many characters, and because we added three characters in here, we have a button saying generate three humans. So if I add another guy or girl, it will say generate four. And you can also generate only the selected markers. So if I select two of them, uh, I'll, I'll be able to generate two humans. But I'll go for all. Then for probability, you have the probability of gender and race. And by default, it is set to completely random. If you're creating a scene that shows, let's say, Tokyo, you can decrease the number of um, non-Asian types and, and generate. You can enable clothing for these characters, expressions, and hair, and define their height limit. You can change the quality. So because you're generating many characters, you may want to reduce the quality. It is automatically set to medium. You can go for high which is the default for individual characters, or you can reduce it even more if the characters are going to be more in the background. So now I'll reduce it and then generate for humans. So it will take a while. But once it is done, you'll have four characters and they're exactly in the poses that we defined with the uh, presets. If I enable material preview, you'll see them uh, fully textured. And so this can be a great way to populate, let's say, architectural visualization scenes, or if you just need background characters uh, for your animation, that can be done with this tool as well. They're not animated, just posed. I guess the video so far didn't really emphasize that the models that you get from Human Generator look great, especially when rendered in cycles with uh, hair and so on. Here are three characters that I created in about 10 minutes. And I don't think there is any other way in which you can create such high quality characters in such a short time and do it all in Blender. Finally, the add-on also offers some advanced features such as creating your own custom content. Technically, it should be possible to create your own base humans, custom clothing and so on. If you would like more information about that, let me know in the comments. If there is enough interest, I will try to figure it out and make a video about it. If you would like to purchase Human Generator, there is a link in the video description. It's an affiliate link. If you buy through it, I'll get a little commission. The price doesn't change for you, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also support CG Dive by clicking like, subscribe, leaving a comment and so on. Appreciate it.